All right, guys. Uh, so I'll apologize in advance if this video sucks. Uh, trying out a, a new GoPro video situation here. Um, <clears throat> I've already taken off the bracket uh, for this, but uh, as you can see right here, somebody in their uh, infinite trashy wisdom this winter decided that they needed to tear the screen off of my Arduino gauge cluster that I uh, built last year. So uh, today we're going to rebuild that and I'm going to talk our way through it. So let me get this all unplugged from here. I've got a new uh, Arduino Mega along with the uh, screen uh, shield for it. I'll put links to those in the description below. And uh, let's uh, walk through this as we try to get it figured out. Alright guys, so to start off with, I took the Arduino Mega off of this bracket. This is just a custom aluminum um, bracket that I made. Uh, it attaches on either side. It just screws into the same bolts that hold this headlight in place. It sits on there. Um, that was my best solution to try to get this on there where it was out of the way but still visible to me. Uh, if you guys do this, something similar to this at home, you're going to figure out your own mounting solution. This is custom to my build, but uh, that's just the way that I did it. I did get some foam uh, sticky on one side put on here just to kind of insulate this so that way it wasn't trying to ground out on the frame. Uh, so something else to keep in mind there if you try to do this at home. So here's the old Arduino Mega setup and here's the new one with the screen. This is uh, the same one that I had previously that someone ripped off of here. Um, this is mounted to that bracket uh, through a couple of holes that are on here. And then in order to hold this on there securely, you get a longer bolt that goes through here, through here, and then into the bracket with a nut on the back of all of those that holds everything in place, holds everything together. Uh, I also found that I had to do that because if I just put this on here as I rode, this would vibrate and pop off of there, especially trying to squish down with these wires under it. So that just helps to hold everything secure, keep your screen from going blank while you're driving. So now what I'm going to do is just swap all these wires over from this one to this one. Uh, the, I used the same code that was on this one, so all of these should line right up to where they need to be. And then we'll get it mounted back to the bracket. And then we'll talk about what all these wires are, where they go to, um, what they do, how they work, and we'll go from there. Okay, so some of my colors kind of get messed up because I spliced them in here with what I had around when I, after I ran them up through the bike, uh, just in order to get the Arduino plug end on there. Um, eventually, I do want to build this in a little bit nicer fashion. Uh, kind of cramped for time while I'm trying to make this video and rebuild this after going for a ride this morning. So, uh, just a quick run through, and I'll uh, uh, hopefully post a, a better post about it later. The first thing we'll talk about is this orange wire here. It gets spliced in over here into a red. Now that one uh, comes from the tachometer and goes into Arduino pin 49. It runs along there and down along here and it plugs into uh, right here. Uh, it's probably gonna be pretty difficult to see. There's probably not a whole lot of light, but down here is the signal wire that comes off of the bike to the ignition coil. What I did was I just pulled that plug off and I stripped a bit of that wire and poked it uh, through this little hole in the spade on the coil side of it. Uh, so I just slid that wire through there and then I slid the plug back on there. So that comes in as a 12 volt signal to tell the coil to fire. Uh, and then it runs up here through the bike. Uh, and I did uh, up here have it hooked in through a uh, voltage divider that I made to, to uh, divide that down from uh, 12 volts down to 5 volts. Um, I'll see if I can uh, find the footage that I had made or at least a picture and post up here of what that looks like uh, and I'll, uh, I'll put a link down in the description below to the calculator that I used to figure out what resistors I needed to bring that down as well but that seems to work really well. Uh, it took me a little bit of trial and error to get it to uh, effectively work uh, and effectively pick up the, the correct um, signals but uh, I did get it working. Now for speedometer I've got a little GPS receiver. Uh, as you can see, one of the wires stripped out there. I'm going to have to uh, solder those before I get this back together permanently. Uh, but the GPS unit, uh, I, I had to reprogram, <coughs> excuse me, to pick up the uh, all the signals that I wanted, um, or rather to be able to parse the information from it that I wanted uh, and get the, uh, the signal to update as frequently as I wanted. 
Uh, the blue wire from that goes to D17. The red goes to uh, the five volt block that's on here and then the black goes to ground. So that way I've got um, the five volt and the black uh, obviously give it, uh, give it the power and then the signal comes in on that blue wire. And this, uh, I just got a little Velcro sticky uh, and it's stuck to the back of that right now. When I do eventually get this to where I build a housing for it, uh, I will find some way to get that GPS unit inside of that housing. Uh, so that way it's not just kind of swinging out in the breeze there. Uh, it is really uh, kind of prone to falling off or, or uh, if I hit a big bump or something, it could be, could be an issue. When I built this, I wanted to make sure that I got a gear indicator on it. I figured if I was custom building my own thing, I could put a gear indicator built into it. Uh, fortunately, the SV650 that this is on uses uh, a gear indicator situation to figure out uh, the uh, fueling map. It changes a little bit uh, going throughout the gear, so it keeps track of what gear it's in. And uh, fortunately, it goes, it reads from a nearly zero voltage in low gear to a nearly five voltage in a high gear. So I just ran a wire directly tapped off of that gear indicator uh, plug, uh, which is, I'm not gonna take my seat apart, but it sits down there. Um, there's a plug in here. Anybody who's worked on one of these may have done the uh, automatic uh, timing retard eliminator, um, and that plugs into that same plug that that's on. Um, I'll see if I can find in my notes somewhere and maybe put a description somewhere down in the description about how and where that plugs in. But I just have that green wire plugged into that plug there. Run up along here again and plug directly into the analog eight here. Uh, so that way it's just got an analog signal, uh, putting in an analog voltage signal in there. So it tells exactly what gear it's in. Uh, and then I just have it read that and based on the output, uh, based on the input rather, it outputs what gear the bike is in. As far as temperature sensing, um, it's a suboptimal solution, but it, it kind of works. Um, so this big thick black wire here goes down to a temperature sensor that is just uh, electrical taped right here, right next to the radiator tube. Um, so it senses that temperature. Uh, and then it comes up here, and uh, I've got it plugged into, um, it's a powered sensor. Uh, so I've got, the red just goes to the five volt block, so it gets a uh, signal out. Um, which actually what I did for this one, just because of the way that I wired it in here, uh, I used D22, and I wrote it as high to supply a constant five volt. Uh, and then I ran that black to a ground, which I actually did as D24 here, written to low to be a zero, uh, which makes it a ground. Uh, so I forced it to have a, uh, a 5 volt power supply there, uh, and then I ran the output wire to D26. Um, and then uh, as far as in the coding, I just tell the program to read D26, uh, and it goes through and it picks up the library that, that's, that this temperature sensor was designed to work for. Uh, and kicks out a, a temperature. Um, I believe it comes out in C, so I had to do some math, uh, you know, in the programming to tell it to kick it out in Fahrenheit. Uh, but uh, that's the way that they did that one. Obviously, you want to keep track of your fuel level anytime you're you're riding a motorcycle. Uh, you don't want to run out of fuel and get stranded out somewhere. So, in the coding, uh, I told it to read uh, one of the pins, and when it gets a certain signal, then to um, overwrite uh, instead of the tachometer across the top, it will have, um, uh, it will say low fuel level. Uh, so what I did was I just ran a wire off of the fuel, sen uh, the fuel level sensor, uh, just a little plug on the bottom of the fuel pump system there. And I ran it up here and I ran it to, uh, I believe it is A14, um, that's this yellow wire right here. Uh, the fuel pump sending unit uh, sends out a voltage based on what the um, what the fuel level is, and when it gets down below a certain level, it signals the stock computer to turn on the fuel light. So I just did the same thing. Um, I had to uh, get a reading and then pump all the fuel out and see what the, the low level is. Uh, and then from there, I uh, just did some coding on the back end to make it work. Uh, so I believe that is all for the bulk of the wiring. Um, got speedometer, got tachometer, we've got a gear indicator, uh, we've got a fuel level sensor, uh, we've got a temperature sensor, 
Um, and I think those were the major things that I wanted to put on it. Um, so that's kind of how I would got it wired up here. Uh, let me go and get the screen put back on here. Um, I don't know that I'm going to totally get it working right now. I'm, like I said, I'm kind of in a time crunch, but uh, that wire I need to, to splice back in in order for the GPS unit to work. But uh, let's go ahead and get it put back together here where it's at least in one piece and see if we can get a quick video of it running. I guess I should probably talk about how I powered this guy. Um, I've got this plug down here that is a Coso adapter plug. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, if you are looking for a custom, uh, or rather aftermarket, uh, gauge cluster for a motorcycle, you're probably familiar with Coso. They make some pretty uh, decent stuff. Uh, but they also make these adapter plugs that plug into your stock harness and have a bunch of wires that come off, so, and then you can wire those into the COSO unit so that way you're not trying to hardwire into your, into your system, and if you want to put it back to stock, you can. Anyways, I got one of those, plugs into the stock SV uh, gauge cluster plug, uh, and then comes off of there. Um, what I did was I just took the power from that and ran it over here to a voltage uh, regulator that I wired into a plug that matches what the Arduino takes. Uh, so we're powered by uh, five volts here, regulated down from 12 through that wiring harness. Um, I think that's plugged in. Let's see if it works. Uh, I did notice when I was switching these over, some of these are pretty oxidized, so I may not have good contact in there and it may not work great. I may have to mess with it a little bit in order to get it running to where I can show you guys how it's working. But uh, let's see if we can get it fired up. Um, so let's see, we got ignition on. Oh, we got power. And it doesn't say anything, which is no bueno. I wonder if that is... Let me see what I can figure out here. It may just be a contrast issue. Um, it was working okay the other day when I had it plugged in inside, but it uh, should be working. Let's try the reset button. Nothing. Okay, hang on. Uh, I should note while I'm messing with this and thinking about it, the reason that I powered it off of this 5 volt uh, input here rather than through the USB, because that would have been really easy to just run a USB plug from, um, you know, the, the little battery cable or something into that. Actually, I've got a USB plug right here. I could just run a little thing. Um, but the reason I did that was because I wanted that USB port open to be able to uh, see what was going on with it as it was running, and you can't power it and see the... Uh, information, the data coming in off of the unit at the same time if you do that. So I just powered it with that so that way I could use that to try to troubleshoot the uh, the code as it was running. Okay, so uh, messed with it for a while. I took it inside, uh, took it apart, gave it a good cussing at, uh, put it back together, and it worked. So uh, I'm sure probably it was just a case of Drew's a dumbass and had the shield on here without the pins lined up like they're supposed to be. But it seems to be working now, so let's uh, give it a little demo. Uh, key on, we'll get the startup sequence. Uh, it'll run through, it'll kick over the odometer, uh, which says zero because I can't seem to figure that out. And then it'll fire up on the start screen. Um, I'll start it, I'll give it a little rev, and then we'll talk about the issues I still have and the things that I need to fix and what's going well and what's not going well. Got low oil pressure, that overwrites everything. Okay, uh, so with the kickstand down, shifting into first kills it, uh, which is a safety feature on this motorcycle, which is great. Um, 
there on the bottom left, uh, you could see the N for neutral was kind of bouncing back and forth between N and six. Uh, the, the cutoff between the gears as far as the voltage that it sends out isn't a hard number um, as far as what this can read. I tried to play with it and get different, uh, get the reading to, to uh, match up to where I could split it pretty evenly so it was pretty solidly one of the, um, one of the gears, but uh, it's kind of a floating number. Okay, so things that are going well. Uh, the startup sequence works well. I gotta figure out what's going on with the odometer and why my coding for that doesn't work. Uh, the tachometer bar graph across the top seems to be working pretty well. Um, it's not dead on perfect, um, but there's no real way to do that. I spent most of last year messing with it, trying to get it to be uh, bang on, and there's just, uh, I think there's just too much electrical interference. Uh, flowing through the system to, to have it be bang on, but uh, I'm pretty happy with, with where it is. Um, the gear indicator down on the bottom uh, works pretty well. Uh, sometimes it reads not quite what gear I'm in. Um, the, the voltage that that uh, gear indicator on the bike reads kind of floats around a little bit, and uh, when I was trying to figure out how to get those levels there, um, I just kind of watched it on the serial monitor as I shift through the gears. Uh, and try to find what levels it was at in which gears and I got it pretty close I think it's about as close as it's gonna get so I may tweak that a little bit in the future But for the most part, I'll probably leave it uh, right now. I'm gonna figure out why the um, So this one up here in the top right is the time it's supposed to get that off of the GPS and I mostly use that as a, an indicator that my GPS is working. Uh, since it says zero zero uh, that means it is not getting a GPS signal so my speedometer down here uh, won't work. Yeah, it did work great previously. Uh, I was really, really happy with the speedometer. Um, and then down here is the temperature uh, in Fahrenheit. That one is um, the temperature sensor that I showed earlier in this video is on the cool side of the radiator. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit cooler than, uh, than what real temperature is. It's also not inside the coolant. It's just taped to the outside, but uh, it kind of gives me a roundabout number. Um, kind of just give me a general idea of if it's uh, you know way overheating or anything. Um, on that note, um, between this one and my other SV, and two and a half years of riding them in Austin in the summer, I've only had the fan kick on on the other one once, and I was stuck in standstill traffic. Um, so I'm not worried about it overheating. Um, everything I've read about these SVs says they basically don't overheat anyway. Um, so those are all the things that are working well, um, some of the things that are not working well. Um, let me see if I can show you guys the serial monitor here and kind of show what it looks like. I tried. All right, so I decided to just do screen capture. That's going to be a whole lot easier. Uh, as you can see on the far left column, you have uh, the actual time pulling off of my computer. The next column there, uh, the next several columns actually are information off of the GPS unit. You've got the time, uh, latitude, longitude, altitude, and then the, the middle column is mile per hour. Those all come off of the GPS re unit. Uh, RPM is reading off of that input I talked about going through the freak measure library. Uh, the temperature comes off that sensor uh, and then the oil pressure and the fuel level and the gear numbers. Uh, those are all coming off of those wires as well. So this is how I watch them to try to figure out what levels those numbers needed to be at to give me a low fuel level warning, low oil pressure warning on what gear is in. Uh, so these are all things you can keep track of while the bike is running. All right, so that is the brief walkthrough of the Arduino gauge cluster for my SV650. Um, I'm going to put up a separate video going over the code. This is just the build. Um, like I said, i got to tweak a few things to get it working. It was working, and then somebody took it upon themselves to destroy it this winter because, you know, humans are terrible fucking creatures. Uh, yeah, so that's it for now. Um, I will hopefully, in the near future, put up a video about the code as well, uh, so that all you Arduino nerds can tear me down on that. And uh, yeah, that's it for now.